All right, so it's six o'clock. Um, so we can go ahead and move forward if everyone's ready. It is uh, Monday, May 16th, 2022. We're here at the uh, John Hogan meeting room here, town uh, office. Um, so we'll go ahead with public comments. Um, Travis, or is this gentleman here who was here first, sir? Or Travis? Uh, I just got a question from the select board. If, uh, I wonder if the town of Morgantown has a policy on class four roads and legal trails for the select board or for the, for the We have to get a, um, it's on the website. We have a class four policy. Yeah. Is that, is that still in effect then? Yeah. So. Thank you. Sir? Hey, what's your name? I have Jeff Poitras. Say again? Jeff Poitras. Oh, he's on the agenda, right? I think so. Yes. Oh, yeah, you're at 615, Jeff. I'm sorry. Yep. But you'll be sooner than that because I don't see it. Any other, Travis, you said with public comment? Uh, just to know, uh, do we have any um, police in, like, uh, enforcement for any of the roads or anything? Just had a lot of really high speed cars going by in Northtown Mount Road, and uh, you know, it's just getting out of hand and a little ridiculous. So, you know, it's almost halfway through the year, and we don't have a sheriff or anything patrolling these roads, so just a little concerned about that. I've asked quite a few times, you know. No, no, I uh, and unfortunately, um, the uh, shortage of both troopers and people for the uh, the sheriff's department have uh, prevented them from contracting with us. Um, I know John's here. We'll talk about the same thing, John. I, uh, I think Corey's probably here for public comments. We can chat with her today. But um, okay. so I know John's got something to say about that as well, and we can discuss it, Travis. And I don't know um, what the solution is at this point, but um, we can talk about it. Corey, did you have a question? Or did you something um, for public comment? I did. So, um, we have received our ARPA grant directly from the Department of Libraries. Um, and we had to tell them what we wanted to spend it on. And because it's over $1,200, I wanted to come get approval to do that. So, we are going to be purchasing some furniture that's flexible. Um, a couple of study corrals so that people could potentially work or, you know, be on a Zoom call without feeling like they're just in the space. Sure. And then uh, some mobile seating um, and then a, a few updates to our collection. So it's about 2834 as the total and like I said, we've already received the funds. I just need to get them spent by the end of July or middle of July. So your ARPA funds, uh, the dates are shorter than what it is for the town itself? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It, it funneled straight through the Department of Libraries. Um, so they just gave each library a set amount based yep. on our population and then some indicators like free and reduced lunch and some other scores like that. What was the total amount that you guys received? 2,834. Oh, nice. Yeah. You didn't have to apply for it or anything? You just we did have to apply for it, but it was pretty much guaranteed once we applied for it. Once you put it in. Good. Yeah. Um, it, as far as the stuff that you're buying, did you put it out on a bid or is that how you procured it? Um, so I had to provide the budget in the grant, and I just did that from the library furniture website, Demco, that we use because we have an account with them. Mm -hmm. um, but. I can certainly shop around a few different places. If you don't mind just doing that, sure. just to look around, making sure you're, but if, if that's a specific site you've been getting stuff, it's probably discounted for that those yep. purposes anyways. Um, but certainly it's your money, you control what you want to buy. So I'm, uh, it's yeah. fine with us. Yeah. Uh, I'd need to uh, allow Corey to spend the money on this aforesaid uh, item that she mentioned earlier. Second. Kelly, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. There you go. Awesome. Thank you yep. very much. Yep.
Anything else, Corey, or how things going over there? Uh, great. The other cool thing we're doing is I've bought a bunch of um, lawn games and tennis rackets and bocce ball that we're going to loan out as a library of things. And that's another grant that we received from the Children's Trust Foundation. So I'm hoping to get that promoted in time for Memorial Day so people can check some games out and come play on the fields. All right, great. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Have yep. a nice night. Yep, you as well. Thank you. Let me just make sure we don't have anyone else waiting in the waiting room here. He's not up here. All right, John, why don't you oh, slide up there? Sure. How are you doing today? All right. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Good. Busy day, but that's okay. All right, so you uh, came in and I'm here on the agenda for speed on the back roads. So uh, yeah, it sounds like you and Travis kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah, I guess. Um, it's too bad John Hogenboom's not here because he would know who, um, uh, anyways, the history of some of the speeding things. Jim Hubble. Remember Jim Hubble? By any chance? He used to live up on the common, he used to come to meetings and just go apoplectic. We all thought we'd have to call the ambulance. He turned around. Anyways, so I'm the Jim Hubble of speed. <laughs> And this started with me when my son was 18 months old, up, up on the common road where I live, 551 where I used to live. And <clears throat> I won't bore you with all the details, but it ended up being an angry call to the state police at 515 for endangering my baby and my puppy. And uh, he actually did call me back. And then he called me back the next morning and said, the parents want to bring these boys by to personally apologize. And I said, no, I like my mailbox right where it is. It doesn't need to be hammered or shot or anything else. Just please educate them, educate them. And I said, frankly, to the cop, I don't care how fast they go up this road, but when they encounter a human, a dog, or both, or whatever, slow down. And I am gonna enter this into the record. And then it goes on and on. I staged a crash one morning after the school bus left. That's the only credit I get. The school bus went by and I went out and I staged a crash in my dooryard, major. And I had my son's bike lying down. I had a pumpkin, because it was October, as his head. And then I had a body covered. And um, somebody, I try not to do names because I'm a professional, but a neighbor went by and she went right to the Moortown store and called the state police, fine. So then another neighbor comes by who, she is totally flipped out. She goes, what happened here? And she comes in and talks to my wife. And while she's, my wife is saying, my, son, my husband's being an idiot, the state trooper drives in. And she grabs our neighbor and goes, we're out of here. You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> and he said, you are more than 50 feet from the center line. You are perfectly within your rights. And he said, frankly, I investigated one of these uh, 15 months ago. A woman in Middlesex was killed walking her dog by a speeding driver. So I have a long history of all this crap. So now I'm on a new road. And yeah, I'm a little, you know, what's the word, prejudiced. But, um, and most of the drivers are good. But um, about, I don't know, five or six days ago, a neighbor randomly pulls into my driveway and goes, John, I heard you're not into speeders on our road. And I go, I'm not. She goes, well, I'm not either. And I go, you live at the end of our road. You know, what is your issue? And she goes, well, I was walking with my friend and we had our dogs. And she didn't do the numbers, right? But she said a couple of trucks went by way too fast and we feared for our well-being. I said, okay. So that's when I called Sasha and got on your schedule. Because now, and this is the point, I guess, but it's all relative, you know, and I know, but I will say this. We pay taxes in this county, in this state, and I go to Montpelier a lot. I teach driving for a living, and there's at least, I didn't count them, but I'll count them tomorrow, 11 dead uh, Washington County Sheriff Jeeps sitting up there doing nothing, at least a dozen. They're in this parking lot doing nothing. We could at least park one somewhere. Like the good old days, remember? You'd be driving along and you'd see this 
cop car parked running radar. There's no one in the freaking thing. But you slowed down because you didn't want a ticket. So that's my point. You don't need people. I'll even do it with insurance. I'll drive the white car. The stadies are busy. I know state troopers. I respect state troopers. They come to all my driver's ed classes. Their major job is drug interdiction on the interstate. And that is the absolute truth. If you call them, they'll come. But basically, it's drug interdiction up there. They don't even care about speed. I've even had an email and say, could you please not tell my driver's ed kids they can go 80? They've said that in my class. It's like, okay, next, next, you know. Anyways, so how about a couple of empty white and red cars? You know, I just, I hear you about the labor shortage, but it's ridiculous. And I'll tell you one thing, if anything ever happens, and I've been through it right out here in front of the school, I won't even go tell you those stories, but if some child gets killed out here and the Middlesex barracks is 7.6.1 miles away, you, I will get angry. It's a, what are you effing idiots doing? Letting a child die six miles from your barracks. How come you're not down here every Wednesday for 35 minutes? Just sit there, have a coffee, I'll buy it. Slow people down. But I would be embarrassed if I was the commander and some child died on my watch six miles from my barracks. What the hell are you doing? You know, what's going on here? I don't care about a heroin dealer from Springfield, Mass, or anywhere else. Children are getting hit here. My son had a broken leg. I had to let him off in front of the school before the whole thing. I stepped. I know I'm an idiot. This is way, this has nothing to do with driver's ed. And I just walked right out in the middle of 100 and I said, stop the car. And he goes, what's the matter? I go, you're going too fast. I'm really sorry. I go, we ought to be. My son's here with him. Anyways, so now I'll shut up, sorry. This is in, it's this thick. Title 23 in the state of Vermont is this thick. And it has a lot of information that none of us need. But this piece of information, every driver in the state of Vermont needs. Okay, motor vehicle law, Title 23, subchapter eight, speed restrictions, cross references, and it is called the basic rule and maximum limits. It's called the basic speed rule, okay? No person, this has nothing to do with teenagers or Vermonters or transplants, okay? Just saying. No person shall drive a vehicle on the highway at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions. Having regard for the actual and potential hazards then existing, in every event, speed shall be controlled as necessary to avoid colliding with any person, vehicle, or other object on or adjacent to the highway. So it's everything. You, you have to share the road with everything and everybody. Cows, you know, everything. Um, you know, I'm not making this up. Except when there exists a special hazard that requires lower speed in accordance with subsection A, blah, blah, blah. The limits specified in this section are established as hereafter are maximum lawful speeds and no person shall drive a vehicle on a highway at a speed in excess of 50 miles an hour. Technically speaking, and I do not tell the teenagers this, you are allowed to drive your car on any dirt road in the state of Vermont at 50 miles an hour. If that it's is, unmarked. It's yes, bad. yes, yes, thank you, if it's unmarked. Same with pavement. But it still says reasonable conditions under the statute. Thank you. You know, try to translate that to whatever. But yes, so I always say 50 on pavement, 35 on dirt. White line, whatever. These are kids. Anyways, the maximum speed limit set forth in this section may be altered in accordance with sections blah, 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 which is true. Again, it's a maximum. Okay, and finally, the driver of every vehicle shall, consistent with the requirements of subsection A of this section, drive at an appropriate, reduced speed when approaching and crossing an intersection, a railway grade, when approaching and going around a curve, when approaching the crest of a hill, when traveling upon any narrow or winding roadway, and when special 
hazards exist, which I know is a wide range of stuff, but we all need to drive for that, okay? Um, blah, blah, blah. So um, I was just at a all day meeting in Killington, Vermont, that the state of Vermont sponsored about impaired driving. It was the Impaired Driving Conference Summit. And there were all the big wigs there. I'm not bragging, but over the years, I've got to know many of them on a first name basis. But, um, but and that was the, the point. But I didn't bring it, but there were these vendors who sell red lights to cops and blinking blue lights and everything else. And they sell speed control and wrong way control signs. And I did bring the booklet. But um, there's all these things on speed control because that's still an issue. And in my opinion, you know, the biggest cause of crashes amongst most people, including teenagers, it's a three point ticket, 90 days, you're riding a stupid yellow bus, driving too fast for conditions. John, I was doing 25 in downtown Montpelier? Downtown Montpelier, you were doing 25? Are you an idiot, you know? 19, 18, 19, 20, and if all of us in this room, I hazard to say, looked at the speedometer down there, you're not doing 25 if you know what you're doing. That's too fast. Um, when they pull into any parking lot, I go, what's the speed limit? They go, look at me and go, walking speed. And I go, yeah, walking speed. I don't want you looking down. I want you looking for the kid running for Skittles. From the gas pump out of the minivan into in the Morgantown store. That's what I want you watching. I don't want you to stupid speedometer. I don't care about the speedometer walking speed. So I guess I've given my uh, passionate thing. Now the other, if I may keep rattling on, have you, okay, obviously he, and I don't know about this gentleman, but it's an issue. So I absolutely propose, and my two neighbors who were nearly hit by this truck a week ago, uh, a, one, a woman and a man, I personally will crowdfund any amount of speed signs that the town of Moortown needs to buy to drop the speed limit. And you and your wisdom can decide the number. But I will absolutely pay for every freaking sign. Now, do I want the whole road posted? You know, I'm kind of selfish. Moortown Common Road, starting at uh, Raymond's house maybe, or a little further down where I used to live, 30. I'll settle for 30, 25 would be great. On my road, South Hill, starting at my house, I told you I was selfish, 25 or 30. Those two, now if, you, if anyone else complains or has and they want some signs, again, I will crowdfund them. They can't be that expensive. You simply get, oh by the way, I radically thank you guys and gals and Sasha for being here, period, every Monday, listening to people like me bitch and moan or every other Monday. I appreciate it. Because I know everyone's, I was on the planning commission, nobody says crap until something happens to their piece of property and then they're in your face. What do you think? I don't care about any regulation. Anyways, I appreciate it. And, um, and also, I can't tell you how much I admire Martin Cameron. You get tired of hearing that. I was out walking my dogs at like 6 o'clock Sunday morning, and I said, hey, Martin, what are you doing? He goes, I'm inspecting the roads. I'm looking, I'm inspecting the roads. And the other day, I called him and said, Martin, it's really dusty up here. He goes, oh, yeah, John, I think it is. And he came up two days later and spread the chloride. And anyways. So I just wanted to be positive about those two things, but really, new signage. So, I don't uh, know. John, do you, do you really think putting signs up without enforcement is going to solve anything? You know, believe it or not, it's a start. No, and my wife doesn't either. She goes, you're stupid going. Um, I think it makes a difference, and uh, you can put up some orange tape. In fact, you know, where I drive up in Plainfield, they've changed the speed limits and stuff, and in Waitsfield, and they, tack a couple of yellow arrows. I think it will help. And really, this is just phase one of my passion. I really am, I know Sam Hill, in, you know, the sheriff, mm -hmm. and a few other guys, the hard way, my son, 
pissing them off and whatever else. But um, I got to know them. They know me. And, um, He's done this year. Huh? He's done this year. Yeah, Sam is? Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. But the point is, something, Ray. No, the answer is no. But something, oh, you know. We, I mean, we can't even give them to sign the contract with us to not control. Now, why do we need a contract if we're taxpayers in Washington County? That's their policy. That? That's bullshit. I'll go there next. Seriously, that's bullshit. Well, I think, I think you have a point. Um, but so there is, there has been concern, and certainly last year we decided, all right, we need to start addressing this one more oh. than what we had said. Oh, I didn't know. So that's, well, that's why we uh, met with Lieutenant White last fall and asked what would be, uh, how do we get a contract with you? Yeah. And so we, they were hiring more uh, people to go to the academy, officers coming out in the spring, and there were supposed to be a number of people available. Yeah. Um, and so we had put a budget number of 20000 Wow. That everyone That's in the town, well, it was overwhelming. It was a, an article and it was overwhelmingly uh, supported by the town. Wow. Uh, so it showed us, or shows us, that people are certainly in tune with this. And when we yeah. talked about it at a town meeting, it was about uh, more uh, traffic control than, than anything. Yeah. Uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, and Travis has been in here asking a couple times about it. Because uh, he lives on the other side of the mountain, and I uh, think they probably cruise by his house. Yeah. Um, we just haven't had both um, the sheriff, Sam, and the lieutenant just don't have the people to yeah. uh, provide. I'll get right to you, sir. Yeah. Um, so, if anyone has solutions, and maybe Mr. Portis uh, has some, yeah. we dealt with this in Duxbury. The police will come. But if your roads aren't legally posted, they're not going to patrol. Mm -hmm. They need to be legally posted. You have to have the right signage out there. Well, that's a whole other factor that was brought up before. And they have to be legal. You have to have yeah, be the right post, way. breakaway post. Yep. It's cost a fortune. Duxbury did that. Yeah, I believe it cost a fortune. Uh, and they yeah. got to be posted at every intersection. Every intersection. And so many distance apart. Uh, I believe. I believe we've done. Yeah. Well, they, they they won't they won't because Sam Hill came himself to Duxbury, uh -huh. and the roads weren't legally posted. And he says until it's legally posted, we're not going to patrol because they're going to fight. People are going to fight it because people know the law. Yeah. So, but I mean, even if you have some just there, just a presence will slow yeah. people down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that like, you know, if, although if you give them a ticket, they can beat it, but at least will slow them down. Yeah. Um, the other thing I is um, what about one of those machines that you know that has people's speeds? What are those speed machines? Oh, that, the radar. The radar machines that are portable. Those work. Those I think. Work. Oh, I was thought they were going to bring one out. Somebody was yeah, but they the first the sheriff and then the state. But maybe that's something we can crowd. Yeah, it's for. called Tradar. Tradar. This catalog I have has all that stuff and. And uh, I guess at one point in Montpelier, they had, it's, this is nothing new, they had the same problem. So the city of Montpelier went to buy one. And it was like 35,000 bucks. Two or three of the maintenance guys got together and they built one. And it worked like a top for like eight, I don't know, thousand bucks, 1,200 bucks. So that's what they used. But yet, apparently those work because people, especially in the village and stuff, they said, well, I probably should be going slower here. We, uh, a few years ago, put in flashing signs that yeah. uh, in the village here, and the, the, the residents have noticed that those have helped. Okay. Uh, and I think it's a lot of times people don't realize how fast they're going. That's true. And, and That's there, true. there are people out there speeding that are doing it just they're trying to get to point A to point B yeah. quicker than they need to be. But there's more often, and even with the accidents, it's the common Joe going down the road and not realizing he's going 50 and a 35 and the kid kid runs out. So I think making people aware of, of what they're going certainly helps. I radically agree. And I've been thinking about it, mulling it over. Um, the, everybody, probably in this room, so I'm not going there, but um, we all drive these big, heavy SUVs now and it really is magic. You know, you drive over potholes and you cruise along, you get the radio going. It's not like driving an older car, whatever that is. We all have them, and they manage these roads better. 
you drive these roads in a 78 or 9, you know, Plymouth or something, and they, they don't, they're bouncing all over, but these SUVs suck it up, and everyone's got them. And so now they're, they, again, you're right, Tom, they don't feel like they're doing anything wrong. They're just magically empowered to go even faster because the roads are, the cars are different, and the roads are still, you heard me say about the road crew, the roads are still borderline maybe, but they don't feel it as much with an SUV, in my opinion. And so I think that's some of it too. And that goes for pavement also, don't even get me going. I think one thing that we need to put out there is, is we do need to call the state police whenever you see those things. And uh, I will uh, say for Lieutenant White and his, his crew there, whenever we have called them, I know different times we've had issues, they've come is fairly yeah. quick. So I think they're, they're trying to do what they can with the manpower they have. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think, I don't know the solution as far as getting more manpower for that, their jobs, but uh, you know, it's a pretty tough job right now. Um, yeah. And you know, what we can do to, to impact the, these speeds, but um, certainly calling the state police we will, I think we should look into one of those um, trade, trade our things that really... Um, and if you want a cheap one, I would call Montpelier. Don't call my guys, because they're corporate guys, it's, they're probably one a ton. But I'd call Montpelier if you have the time, see what their experience is. But I was a crossing guard out here with a bunch of moms. And I would cross the Zhao kid, both of them, including the one who passed away. And the, every, they are about the only ones who crossed. And then I swear, at 8.04, cars had come rocketing through there, and I go, this sucks. So I went home and called the state police, and I said, what would you guys think if a crossing guard held out a stop sign just to slow people down? He goes, Mr. Lynch, we don't, we cannot approve of that. He goes, get, the, get their plate number and the vehicle description and the occupants, and we'll call them. And he said, once we call them, registered owner, whoever that is, they, they slow down, they take notice, they know someone has eyes on them. And Tom's right, that does work. All you need is the th first three numbers. You don't need a, a, you know, XXF, dark green SUV with one person in it. How many of those in the state of Vermont? Not many. One in Brattleboro, one in Waitsville. <laughs> Call the Waitsville person. You were noted exceeding the post of limit, endangering children in the village of Moortown. Could you like back it down a little? Because this next call was not going to be this pretty. So Tom's right, you can, you can call the states, but really, I can include everyone in this room, and I've called them many times. I call them at the beginning of school, August, September. I go, school starting, yes sir, and I go, how about sending a unit out? for 15 minutes sitting at the fire station. Could you do that? I think we can. You know. So yeah, some kind of presence. Yep, Jeff. I'm a, I'm a, she works for Barry City in Spalding. When they have a problem with the kids speeding, they take their permit away from them for school so they can't bring their car. Oh. And that's how you stop a lot of the kids. Yeah. There's ways well, around it. Get the license plate, I guess, is the, is the fuel. But we got to end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Move on. But John, you brought, um, again, and, and Travis as well. Thank you for putting this in front of us again. Yeah. We can reach out. Why don't we reach out again to Lieutenant White and uh, yeah. Sheriff Hill? Uh, does anyone know who's, uh, or they have to run for sheriff, right? Or is there someone being appointed at this point? Because there's no. No, no, no he's, his term's up in, I think, November. He's done, and somebody is running. Mm -hmm. So of his uh, people or something? I was told who it was, I just... <clears throat> yeah. They were... I thought it, we were getting closer with them six weeks ago, a month or so ago. They had some people in town patrolling to check out the roads, oh. if you will. Yeah. Um, and then that was, that was the last we heard of it, actually. Yeah. But um, any kind of presence, including an empty car, I'm good with. But, you know, just... I, I'm, and then with COVID and everything, it's a nationwide thing. I've been to conferences. People are just rocketing along because they know that there's less enforcement, and less traffic. So now they're free to go faster because there's not the congestion. But 
that's another topic. All right. Well, thank you, uh, John. Well, thank you for listening. I'm glad you came, and thank you for your passionate plea. We we're hearing you, um, and yeah. I wish we could. No, that. just being able to verbalize it, and like you know, and I'll do my end. I'll call them every now and then. Now that school's ending, it's, it'll be a little mellower, but still, you know, there'll be plenty of kids up and down the sidewalks and swimming and cravings, but I'll try to do my end at least once a month. You know. Good. Again, Good. a little rundown, cup of coffee, sitting there, and then they don't even have to write. I talked to the guy in Waitsfield once in Washington County. He goes, you know, I'm not trying to piss anybody off. I just want them to slow down. And I don't think he, he's barely written a ticket. But Peter? that's okay. Yeah, the young guy. Oh, no. See, I had a ride along with Peter Laskowski. Oh, you did? He yeah. And he, in essence, says the same thing. Yeah. Like, just wanting people to slow down. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. all I want. I don't want people to get tickets. No, we appreciate it. And thanks yeah. for the comment on right, the, uh, the road crew. Yeah, uh, thanks we for your We work. have a uh, great road crew. Actually, our, our employees in the town uh, here in the office yeah. and on the road. Uh, we're very fortunate in all the volunteers we have. We have a lot yeah. of our planning commissions and yeah. uh, great. You know, being, we're, we're lucky we got a good, good people in town. I know, we switched houses, but we're so glad we stayed in more town. I mean, that was one of our things, but we're so happy to stay here. Yes, how, and how's that you doing? Oh, she's busy. She is so busy. She has me working for her. That's how busy she oh, is. Geez. I don't know a petunia from a whatever, petaluma. <laughs> But uh, I'm learning. Good. I'm learning. Take it easy, John. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you, Ray. Bye, Cal. Okay. Oh, I've Sasha. got a couple of people in it. Sorry. The guy's going to watch you. this board up here. You see people that, oh, yeah, sorry about that. They're trying to get in. And then they call me and say, you didn't let me in. Uh, just John, so. <laughs> now there's someone on the stairs, though. John, did you make it in? There I am. Oh, yeah, here I am. Here I am. Who's the other guy with uh, the six five eight four number? Just that must have been uh, John trying to get in the door. All right. So now John Hogan has entered the meeting as well. Uh, Jeff, why don't you kind of roll up or pull up to the desk? And uh, John, we're at uh, we got speaking uh, well, of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have Jeff Portress uh, yeah. uh, from the fire district in Duxbury, and uh, Stefan here on as well. <laughs> Thank you, I hear you. All right. That better? Yeah, we go. As far as you know, unmuting things will work. Travis, you can pull up, isn't it? Just, just, I don't have to sit in the back. Right kind of roll away of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad you couldn't lock them in. That's the same thing I would do. There should be a lock on them so you're not like, pushing yourself around all the time. But anyways. So Jeff, what's going on? Uh, I'm from the Duxbury Martown Fire District. We had an annual meeting last month. No, actually, the beginning of this month. I moved out of town from Duxbury, moved to Williamstown last June. I gave the, the fire district a year to figure out what they want to do with it. At our annual meeting, nobody ran for any positions. So our lawyer says we needed to contact Doxbury and Moortown to see if you guys want to take it over, which I already know the answer of both Doxbury and Moortown. It's not feasible. And we're going to give it, end up giving it to Waterbury. And if they don't want it, we're going to sell it. But it affects 50 something customers in Moortown. It's 50 or 60 customers in Moortown. Cobb Hill, that whole corner, Gallagher Acres, is fed by the by us. Okay. We buy our water from Waterbury and sell it. To, and we also cover the school in Duxbury all the way to town clerk's office. All right. It's not a money maker. <laughs> no. <laughs> Does it sound like it? No. No. So our lawyer says we need to contact Moortown and Duxbury. And I go to Duxbury next week. 
And so from us, you're looking whether we want to, to buy, is that what you, well, how do, like the lawyer said, if you want just to keep the Moortown part, then you guys would be, have to take care of all that. Waterbury does our building for us right now. Whether they would do it for you guys, you would have to make a contract with them for them to do all the building. Right. And we take care of all the maintenance. So whenever there's water line breaks, they come out of our pocket. So then it would come out of your pocket. And same with Duxbury. And that's what would happen. So the feasible way, we think, is just to let Waterbury take it over. Yeah, because they've been doing the billing for the last 20 something years. And I've done all the maintenance. Well, I don't want to do it anymore. And there's nobody else in the fire district that can do it either. Now there's actually nobody on it. But the lawyer says they can stay on it until we decide what they're going to do with the fire district. So that's why I'm here. So, yeah, do you yeah, want yeah. it? Can I ask a question? Is this for fire hydrants? I yes, don't really understand. Fire hydrants and water. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we certainly fit CrossFit Brook School is fed by Waterbury right. Water, which is sold by the Ducks of our town fire district to the school. So the, the fees or the income you get from that doesn't cover the cost of it, is that what you're saying? It does. And it doesn't. It doesn't do. Yeah. We just had two water main breaks in the three about eight feet apart last year. It cost us thirty thousand dollars to fix it. Yeah. Well, we haven't had any water main breaks in twenty five years of owning it. So the system shouldn't have any breaks till you hit it fifty to hundred years. But now we're looking at the ductile cast iron pipe is getting thin and we come to find out that with bad cast iron 25 years ago and the company that put it in or sold it to us went out of business because of it and we're stuck with it <laughs> so hmm. well, I, get to go home. Um, I mean i don't this is new stuff to me, so I don't really know. But to me, it doesn't seem like it's... It's, it's not worth it. It's not really worth it for you to take it over because you're looking at 50 customers. Yeah. And Duxbury has a school. So if they're going to... They're the ones who would actually get help federally and whatever because of the school. Yeah. But you do have... Oh, God. Another place where the older old folks live there. Uh, yeah. Fairground apartments. Okay. So, all right, but yeah, I don't think this is anything that we need to uh, maintain or get into. John, you've been around for a while. What's your experience with this been? You're muted, John. Ne never, never had any experience with this type of thing, so. Um, I don't know what to say about it. Right? I mean, you have me. I mean, there's a lot of work involved. In it. it just sounds like a lot. Of, like you said, work and, and what? What? It sounds like. Thank you. I appreciate you putting the time in and answering. Would there be? Is there any any advantage to us only? It's yeah, only that one small right. section of town. Yeah. It doesn't, it sounds like it, the only thing you could do is suck a lot of money out of this at one point. So if we don't take it over, does that mean it's no longer going to be used? Is it, no, but, it's, it'll still be used. But like somebody yeah. needs to still maintain it, but it may not be more town paying for it. As of right now, we're trying to get it to Waterbury. Hopefully they're hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of or not here, you know, that yeah. better. Um, They've been doing all their billing and all that water testing for 25 years. Which seems like a logical choice that Waterbury would take it over. My water will be in the next month. End of June, I'm done. 
You're tired, huh? Now I'm I'm done. I gave a year. My year. I sold my house in Duxbury June 27th. So June 27th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. So something needs to be done before I leave. Yep. Because I still got some stuff to fix. But there's actually nobody left on the venture committee. There's only there's two members. One works for UPS. The other guy's 83 and he's legally blind. So. So if, if Waterbury didn't take it over, would they just turn off the valves and say, sorry, you're kind of this or worse? No. Our lawyer is looking into selling it to somebody okay. if Waterbury doesn't want it. Okay. And that could take two, three years to do. So The chance of people being without water no, is not, not going to happen. No. Okay. It's just somebody to make. Somebody's just going to jump in and take it. Yeah. Out. As of right now, there has to be three people on a financial committee that make all the decisions. So. So how do we, um, I guess, turn over ownership or, or get away, walk away from this? Well, it's, you don't have any ownership in it now, so. Right, I guess. All not. you got to do is say, no, we don't want nothing to do with it. And that right there is good enough for me. All right, what do you guys think? I, I think that uh, we should just walk away from it at this point. Kelly? Yeah. John? Yeah. All right, so uh, four of us are saying we're walking away. So I make a motion, so it's uh, official. Uh, I move to, um, I guess, lack of a better term, walk away from the uh, Duxbury, uh, Moortown Fire District, allow it to go to uh, Waterbury or whoever as next owner. I'll second that. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, yeah. There you go, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Yep. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate your time. <laughs> I knew the answer. Please <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do the right thing. You do the right thing coming in. And you explain you gotta, it well. You got you to be legal and yep. follow. And Jeff, before you leave, I wanted to say thank you. You've done a lot of years of doing some really good work for us on the hydrant system. Stefan. That's Stefan. Yeah, I know Stefan. No, since he was like this big. Yeah. He always wanted this big. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stefan. Uh, it's all right. Have a good one. Yeah, tell your mother I said hello. I'll do that. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody want to move me in on the road with my car? Grab mine in the back of my car. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are in uh, the reports, communications. Sasha, let, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, there has been a request for usage of the rec field for a graduation party on June 11th. And this is the first request I've had, so I don't know. Do you guys charge? Do you require insurance? I think we need to ch check with the insurance carrier on that. Um, the private party? He has three graduates that are graduating at Holloway. Yeah, are three, they from Moortown? Two of them are Moortown residents. Yeah, I'm not inclined to uh, charge anyone for it, just as long as everything's left the way it was um, received. Um, but there may be a fee for some type of insurance or some waiver or something like that. Okay. Um, so if you can just follow through with that and then um, we should post on uh, front porch forum like a week before and maybe a day before that um, whatever area it is, the gazebo probably they're going to use and whatever is being um, reserved for a private okay. Should we put some sort of uh, time limit? Like, you know, no music after, they, you know, they've had a band, and this could go on. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Probably, uh, like 11 o'clock or? Uh, 10 is probably fine. We get Schultz's and people right around the neighborhood. So, yeah. okay. uh, you know, if things could shut down or, or get quiet after 10, they, they can still be around, but just, you know, be to adult war. You know, um, um, I sent you guys.
provides a letter that I composed for Mr. Hatch to explain what CIA, CAI explained to me with his. Yeah, I saw that. Nice job writing that. I was wondering if you couldn't just get um, CAI or themselves to write it out, put it on their letterhead, and send okay. it because it's there. Yep. Really their responsibility. Okay. Uh, I did see that. Oh, okay. That was plopped in our hands. That was from last year. Yeah, I remember the incident. I did. I, did, I don't remember. Yeah. I, don't I remember. sent in through email last Friday, I think. Yeah, sometime Friday. before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and uh, they had a new person, a new senior planner, um, Brian Boyd. And I know that Ray has at least met, met him via phone. Um, so at any rate, so basically the meeting consisted of just reviewing basically the last couple of years of, uh, of items that we've been working on. Um, and um, then the other thing is that uh, Don's not there, correct? That's right. Okay. Uh, Don and I also had another meeting with Joyce Manchester. And so we're, we're moving forward with trying to get those blinking lights, or at least the one move down to uh, by Packard. Um, but I guess that's got to be permitted um, because the change, the change in the location. Uh, so who uh, permitted with who, who, John? Who told you it needed to be yeah. permitted? Permitted? Who do you? Yeah. Who's the permit holder? I mean, we'd be the permit holder. But... Well, I mean, we're we're the permit holder. Right. But I believe since it was set up, since it was set up for the safe routes to school, the location was chosen for that reason. So, um, I know that uh, Joyce was going to be getting in touch John Kaplan from the state regarding that. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think when we did that, I, it was willy-nilly where it wasn't all that specific. We walked out there, we were with, you know, the group from the state and also from uh, the safe routes and just kind of put it there. So I don't think there's any scientific um, reason why it was put there. So I don't think we need to get too busy or too crazy with Okay, well, uh, yeah, hopefully that won't be, yeah, hopefully there won't be an issue. The other, the other thing we talked about was um, the uh, crosswalk. I can be doing the sidewalk project at least after a while. Um, you need to get those crosswalks taken care of. So um, that um, I believe is Ian Degudis. I believe is is uh, in charge of that. So we were hoping to have um, again Joyce was going to reach out to him, and hopefully we were going to be able to meet. And you know, so we can talk about where the crosswalks would need to go. And I'm hopeful that we can do like they did in Wakefield with putting a cement slab um, like opposite. Where where in Wakefield, John, did they do that? Um I, the woman was was killed. Is that crosswalk? Right, but that's that is actually it's just not a slab. It there's a whole walk there, John. There is a sidewalk there. It's it's not cement, but it's it's a designated sidewalk. It goes out to um, the brewery, and it's part of its boardwalk, and there's a part of it is um, uh, crushed rock or stone or something. So there is it, it just doesn't go to a. a, a a slab so even though a it's not concrete, okay. So even though it's not concrete, like a concrete sidewalk, it's still considered sidewalk. Right, because I think it's all the dimensions. I mean, we don't have anything across. If you're thinking like uh, across from the store, um, still just kind of goes to nowhere um, there. Well, then, then technically we wouldn't even be able to have one at the school. Well. Technically now, because that is taken out, that is correct. But, you know, I think um, rather than me making those decisions or, or what I know, we should have the guy from the state, like you said, come here. Yeah. Um, and maybe there's waivers if we are doing sidewalks uh, in the future or something. But um, it would be nice right. to have something there to perhaps slow traffic down. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So continue on with okay. the, with the Joyce. Yeah. Okay. Anything um, else, John? And, uh, um, just that uh, moving along, it uh, looks like that uh, uh, David Stapleton is going to be the planning commission by default. <laughs> Rep on the um, town forest, hmm, the town forest management plan. Okay. And um, Ray, Ray, you're gonna you're gonna participate too, correct? Uh, okay, I, I guess uh, we might have talked about that. I don't remember that, John, but well, I, I I could probably participate. Okay. Sure. Okay, and um, I spoke with Mandy, and she's on board. Cool, and. Um, so, um, um, Mike Brown wanted to get going on it early in June, so we'll be having a meeting uh, quite soon on that. And I guess that's it. Thank you, John. Okay. All right, so I... Um other than hearing from a few residents that they needed uh, uh, stuff put down for dust. I really haven't heard much from, from anyone. Um, and I've talked to Martin and they're, they're working on that. Uh, they did this past week, so I think we're good there. Um, let's go ahead and approve the next oh. yes. actually, actually, speaking about town forest, the, we did not, the last meeting, we did not uh, decide on um, where the money would come to pay for um, Mike Brown's fee. Okay. So it's going to be around 1800 All right. Well, I think we can um, just use ARPA funds for that. That's it would be considered something that's um, traditional. Oh, yeah. Something that a town would be spending okay. money on, so I think we can. Yeah, that would be. Okay, that would be perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. All right, John. Uh, so let's go ahead now. Uh, approve this. The minutes for uh, May May second. I move that we. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of May second. Second. Kelly seconds that. Thank you, John. All in favor of Rai? Okay. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Aye. You. All right. Um, so let's go ahead. We have uh, insurance for employees. Sasha, is there something you want to talk about for us? Uh, I Sherilyn's mostly talked to him. She told you what. John, did you um, work with Sherilyn on this? Did you say would I or did I? Did you? No, no, I, I did not. All right, so um, this is going, so I think Cheryl and I did talk about it. I didn't know whether someone had um, worked with it. But so the select board here, I don't need to call her. Um, so there's a proposal for additional uh, life coverage for the employees. Um, right now, they get. Uh, Ten thousand dollars life insurance and uh, ten thousand um, dollars accidental death benefit. Um, that's paid by the town. That's not. That is, pardon me. That's what they would like. So that's what as, they would. That's right. what they would like. Pardon oh, okay. me. Okay. Um, so as an employer, we could buy that for one hundred and fifty-one dollars. Uh, per year for the six employees. For all six, for one hundred fifty-one dollars. For ten thousand. For ten thousand. Right. So um, it seems like a reasonable request for one hundred and fifty dollars. Everyone would get ten thousand life and ten thousand um, accidental death benefit. Um, mm -hmm. And and then go ahead, John. And then they could they could buy. Uh, Right, and then that allows them to buy. And then that, 
additional okay. insurance. And then add dependent. And, and add a co dependent, at, I think it's $25. So, um, is everyone okay with that? Yeah, that's pretty reasonable, I think. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds fine. And it's not, I mean, it's not a, a bunch, but, uh, you know, 10, it's, Twenty thousand dollars, and someone passes away, or, or something, that could make a difference in someone's life. Yeah. So uh, I go ahead and uh, move to spend the one hundred and fifty-one dollars twenty cents for the year for the six employees uh, for accidental accidental death and life insurance. I'll second that. All right. Um, probably you should abstain from this vote. Um, all in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. Thank you on that. So that is passed. Um, so I should, you know, and we also can uh, purchase pet insurance. Is that? The pet insurance, it just needs to go into the town entity unless you guys wanted to give it as a benefit, but I don't think no, so very reasonable. If Right, so we'll, it can be available to the employees, but we're not going to provide pet insurance. Right. All right. So you're okay with it being under the Moortown umbrella? Yeah, I think so. Sure. As long as it, uh, we don't have any pets here for the town pets, do we? None that we publicly name anyways. All right. Um, very good, so let's go. Yes, John? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll make a motion um, that we um, offer as a voluntary benefit the pet insurance. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I mean, it would, be, it would be just like, it would be just like uh, they do now with Affleck, it would be a voluntary benefit. Yep. No, I think it's probably good to put it on uh, a motion like that. I second. Ray seconds. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Ray. And aye. John. Thank you. All right, what do we have? Anyone uh, have any new business they want to discuss tonight? Well, I just wanted to uh, hit back on, or going back around to the speeding thing, um, you know, whether we should look into uh, purchasing some of those solar, paint, you know, solar signs with the flashing lights, I, you know, I don't know. How much it would be, but I'm, I'm guessing you know, ten thousand dollars a piece or whatever. But you know, I don't know what else we can do other than try to do some more warning like that. You know, or look into purchasing the trailer mount or something like that. But I I don't know uh, who wants to pursue that or who should pursue that. But I think we'll have Sasha pursue that. But she should, she would and call. I think you should call Lieutenant White and get his opinion on what they have or where they, they have a thing. Call them up to where the very police that John was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and then just public safety equipment. There's got to be plenty, or not plenty of that out there, but there's got to be some vendors of that type of equipment and then we can take a look. Yeah. And I think something portable that we can move around that makes people aware of what they're doing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just like a lock. It Watch the honest people out and letting people know what they're going will, I think, you know, help them you know, stop their speed. Yeah. Okay. And um, again, that's something that we could probably use some of our put money on for something like that as well. Is that yeah. again is something that's traditional purchased by a town or a police department? So it might be an <coughs> opportunity to buy something we normally wouldn't um, that could benefit, but benefit all. Yeah, because I don't have the same thing. I have no freaking clue of what else to do. Um, I play chicken with people. <laughs> right. I have literally been walking the dog. I have put him on the side of me, and I have played chicken well, with my neighbor Harry you, Brooke with you, his trailer. You need to be careful. You get yourself killed, and yeah. you know that saying "dead right." You don't want to be right, but dead. Um, yeah. um, it works though. Well, you know what, sometimes uh, even pointing out, you know, we've had other effective means by even on the front porch um, mm -hmm. forum pointing out the gray truck that's going 50 by my house, you know, 
you know, please stop or things like that. I mean, sometimes appealing is the personal nature of these people, you know, they're a bit of chronic. Some of us do it and I'm sure I have sped on our roads and, oh, yeah. and I really am trying, I try not to, I'm very careful not to, um, but I can, it can happen. Um, it, it can happen too. Um, but it's those people that are chronic that do it all and the time. I've noticed walking, especially on our roads, it's the same people and I can, you know, maybe, and again, you need to be careful, but if you acquaintance with them or no, I'm just, you know, remind them, hey, look, at this is a residential road. Um, you know, grow up, drive responsibly. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't put yourself in, in, in danger because it's just not worth it. Um, so, Ray, you had some old business. I did. Um, so, um, started with the Recovery Act. So the committee did meet, we met last Thursday and uh, basically I believe we're meeting the next Wednesday and hope to have some recommendations to the select board, the first meeting in June, particularly regarding the uh, fiber, the CB fiber money. At least that's a start. I mean, it's going to be an ongoing process. There's okay. no way we can get all the all the data. Yeah. But at least uh, we can do something. Uh, so I guess ex expect uh, on the first meeting in June that we may be able to make a decision on some EB5. of the money. five. Okay. At yes. Least that would. I'm not. You have a, not EB five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> that's another mess. I yeah. just. Um, the, the legal trails, um, you know, I, I know we have some issues to tackle. Uh, I'm, I'm really feeling a lot better now. I'll be able to get into it more. And, and certainly, Travis, I know you're very interested in it. And I'll, I'll keep you in the loop as far as oh, I appreciate that. Uh, so what goes on, what I'm thinking. And, you know, welcome. you're welcome to participate, you know. Well, I, I definitely would like to be part of that. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, you can see Mike, it's just, you know, being here all the time. And, uh, uh, yeah. It's taken up 12 years of my family's life and my own, and uh, it's taken up many more. So I'll, I'll keep going to loop. So, you know, I'm going to get into it more and try to get this upright. Yeah. So um, when you're talking legal trails, are you talking? Um, trying to get a plan for the, uh, well, we know at least the, the two that we want to tackle yeah. this year. Um, and, All right. and also, and I think Denise may be on board there. Uh, you know, Denise and, uh, from Cobb Hill had mentioned about uh, the town being more, more proactive and, and getting um, our town road policy out to people that are buying on class four roads. Well, yeah, so that's why I think, I think there's two, there's two, two issues. There's two, two issues. issues. There's legal trails and there's also road four policy and, and trail policy. Yes. Uh, so on that, I think that you and I and Martin should uh, sometime within the, hopefully the next week, uh, if you're available and, and I, and Martin, as long as he's working, we can work around that, but should get out to Cobb Hill. Yeah. Let's take a walk. Um, and I think I want to get, or I'd like to get uh, the planning commission involved as well. Um, and then we need to sit, we need to sit down and, and figure out how we can word something on that, whether it's uh, road four policy. I, I want to get something that it's not uh, that doesn't prohibit people from building on these areas, but it also needs to address what the roads are going to look like when they're there. Right. So we have for emergency uh, and whose responsibility for all those. I know the policy now it's fairly clear, but I think we need to expand that uh, to properties that are being built and, and, and such. Uh, and we need to do it probably sooner than later. So mm -hmm. if we can get together within the next week, us just walk it. So we have an idea, I think, you know, physically what we're thinking about yes. and then get the people um, we have, like you said, there's, there's Denise, there's, there's other people um, that this affects, I spoke to, Another gentleman that lives out, um, that has property out on uh, Cobb Hill from Connecticut, I, I, 
his name is escaping me, but he called me today as well. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be doing, um, they want to, you know, in the next few years, improve the road, improve their property. So, um, you know, we need to, to get that certainly done and, and make it equitable for both the town and the people that are the homeowners or, or the landowners. Um, I have a little to add to that, Tom. Sure. Our current town plan done in 2016 very easily spells out on the contrary of not allowing or updating these roads. Um, you know, that's our town plan in place currently. And now if we're gonna go the complete opposite direction of what the town plan is dramatically in a short period of time, um, that's kind of going against uh, what the town plan already has in effect, Title 19 already has in effect, and our zoning currently already has in effect. So are we just gonna go out on our own, or is no. the select board going to go out on their own free will and just go completely against the grain of what, are, what, what is already common law, town plan, and just uh, no, that's, policy. That's, that's not what I'm saying, Travis. That's why I said I wanted to make sure that we had Dave Stapleton. He's the chair of the planning commission there. Right. Yes. But what I want to do is, is upgrade our road for policy. And it, it may not be possible to do this, but I would like to put something in place that we can improve these roads or, or, or do something and allow people to develop their properties without having to change the town plan. And it may not be possible, Travis. I don't know, I'm not the expert on that. Well, but I mean, it's, it's just already spelled out in our town plan. It's already spelt out in our class four in trail policy. Currently, that is not being followed by the select board because there was somebody in here last select board meeting uh, saying that a class B, class four road is being worked on by the town. And on, according to our policy, a class B, class four road is not suitable to be ever worked on by town's equipment. So this is where I'm, I'm well, calling it a conflict. Martin is the guy that decides whether the road can be worked on with the equipment or not. Well, and, that's what, and, that's what, and that's what distinguishes between an A and a B, whether it can be or cannot be. So in, in roads, can be upgraded and changed from B to A and, and quite frankly go from A to B or A to a trail, or not A to a trail, but A to B. So, yeah. you know, splitting hairs like that, please don't. Uh, well, I am because we have a policy and it's already listed as a B class four road. So update your, your paperwork before moving forward with doing procedures of grading these class four roads or Martin working on these class four roads because right now it's currently going against our policy. Well, again, we are in charge board. of the policy. I mean, he's the guy that just helps determine whether it's an A or B. If he finds that, all right, I can get the, the grader or the piece of equipment out there, an a, then. then we do it. Right, I understood that. But, uh, you know, upgrading these roads is an awful expense to the taxpayers in Morton. And you know, it, it, uh, in statute, it basically, or we have mentioned before, I mean, we, I mean, I mean, the select board has mentioned before, if they want to upgrade these roads, they can on their own, their own price tag. But it's a long process. I think you know that's what has been explained to them before, and uh, you know, I'm gonna, I want to be a stickler on a lot of this stuff. You already know that. It's fine. You know, and I appreciate the time that you're giving me to speak right now. Thank you. Um, no, well, so anyways, we need to get together. We need to do some work. We, then we, we need to do some work. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, the whole intent is to, is to make the place, the town, inviting, livable, and uh, hopefully attract more people mm -hmm. into the town. But um, in doing that, they also need to know. It needs, it needs to be clearly explained to them. Right, what the rules. What the rules and, and what their expectations what are, their which I think the disconnect maybe is not in the town or they don't know where to look or 
people, realtors, whatever, saying, oh, no, it's fine. This They do this and they do that. No, well, no, what what often either. happens is they know the rule. Um, they build anyways, and then they want the town to, to mm -hmm. upgrade the roads. And those are the things that we need to make clear that that's not going to happen. We're also, if they're upgrading to a certain point, where does the town um, start maintaining? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Or are we willing to maintain ditches or, or, or such like that? Those are the type of things that we, we need to kind of yeah. smooth out a little bit. I agree. <laughs> I'm Denise. Hi. Um, not to drag this conversation out, out but um, I have maintained the legal trail going to my house for since 1996 um, with no expectation that the town would do anything, but the town continues to grant building permits to people to build off of the legal trail and that's fine, but also they haven't, um, they, you know, they, there haven't been any policies or ordinances clearly stating that if that person that builds off of a legal trail destroys it um, and does not put it back to a reasonable condition or the condition before they built it, um, you know, <laughs> they can't just destroy it just to put a house out there and then call the town and say, oh, I can't get to my house because it's a mess and. No, we and, understand and that's why mm -hmm. I've suggested that me and Ray and our road commissioner get out there, yeah. take a look and then figure out our, or even our road permits that we're giving, giving to people to make sure yeah. that we're, we're including the simple things, although it does state some of that, we need to be more clear. Um, and again, expectations down the, the road with these, these permits. And again, that's why I think it's important that we get the planning commission uh, involved, because if this is going to be a thing where we're continuing to grant permits for homes that are on these, these, uh, these class four roads or trails, it needs to be something, some policy or something that they are, that the roads are being um, uh, either maintained or something for emergency. You know, um, right, emergency, fire, ambulance, state police. Right, um, all, and just, all those. You know, all of the services right. that you need to have a house. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I do, I have spoken with the Berganos from Connecticut and they basically want to build a house in the midst of a swamp. Um, they bought 60 acres of a wetlands and there's no good way to get to it. So they want to upgrade the road that goes past my driveway. Um, but in doing so, <laughs> they risk destroying the road that's already there. Um, so that's why well, they're interested. We need to know that that is the actual road as it been surveyed properly by the town. That would be the other question. I don't, I don't know. I'm just merely stating that they have a vested interest because they bought a piece of land last year. They want to build a house and whatever else out there. It is in the middle of a swamp, in the middle of a protected wetlands. There's no way to get to it without putting material in to make a road that's travel, you know, can be traveled on. Um, and that is going to potentially destroy the existing road in doing so. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Denise. I have a quick thing to add, mm -hmm. um, Tom, just really quick. Yep. We currently do not have a map in this town office anywhere, printed map or even on the website, that is a VTrans most recent map. We have a map that's on the website currently that I'm, I'm really astounded. Where did it come from? There's no date on it. It's not an official VTrans map. 
it says planning VTrans map or something. And it's, it's a completely bogus map. It's like, I've even been to Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission talking to their GIS people, and they're completely mind boggled where this map ever came from. So if we could at least get the official map in our records here in the town office, even in the city, it's not there. 2016 is the most recent map of VTrans, which shows these legal trails, class four roads. The current map that's on the webpage does none of the above. And it's, it's just mind boggling where this map ever, ever came from. And I've been chasing that for 12 years now. So are you saying that these maps right there? I'm saying I, that I, that that's on the web page. I don't know if that's the one that's on the web page. The one that's on the web page is a completely bogus map. There's no data on it. It's not an official VTrans map. It is a planning something something map that came from probably Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. But I cannot trace where this map ever came from. All right, Travis. Thank Thanks. You. That, that was just yeah. That was just that other point there. That would help some other people probably know what's going on. Yep. All right. Um, what else did you have on old business, Ray? So, the parking lot drainage project. Yes. When we met with the Central Vermont Regional, <laughs> Regional Planning Commission back in March, it was my understanding that they were going to have this project out for bid to a contractor that it would be built this year. <clears throat> so, and during the time that I've been dealing with this knee thing, there was an RFP that went out, but the RFP is only, it's not for a contractor, it's for another management consultant to oversee the parking lot project. So this RFP that's out right now, they're getting RFPs that are due the 18th from engineers or consultants, and then they're gonna award, a pro, uh, award to them June 2nd, and then from that point, that consultant is gonna put this project out for bid, which really, puts us not into the construction this year. It's not gonna happen, I don't think. So I, I, I tried to talk to Brian, I think his name is Brian, the new project manager, and I called him and I sent him an email and I haven't heard a response, but. I thought that's what we've done before. I mean, that was all the work that was done to get to this point. I, that's what I thought. I, I really was, and, and I, I take responsibility for not looking more closely at this RFP that's out now, I just assumed that we are looking for bids from contractors, that Regional Planning Commission was going to manage the project, like they said right. back in March. But now it's co completely different, and I, I, I'm completely baffled of the whole process. Other than we're spending a lot of money and we're going nowhere. Right. in service. Yeah. And I'm really, really concerned now because the whole, the whole pipe like the drainage pipe and everything, like eight inch SDR 35 was $8 a foot last year, it's $38 a foot right now. So, I mean, this whole project is gonna be, could potentially be well over what we have budgeted, even if we get to build it this year. So I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I'll try to get more answers, but just giving you an update that it's not what I had thought okay. for sure. We'll keep pushing and um, you know, asking those questions and yeah, but it might we might be better off even building it next year, anyways. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, maybe there won't be uh, the prices that we're seeing now. Yeah, no, yeah. that's amazing. That's going it to is. Look at that. Well, look at what our lawyer went up 180 percent. Yeah, what else you got that's for us, Ray? That's enough. Kelly? So we got a couple other things. Um, zoning administrator, we were close to hiring someone. Um, I guess last meeting I wasn't here. And so that, that person ended up uh, withdrawing his application as well because he worked for the state and there was gonna be some conflict. Um, since then, 
Sasha was able to work and we got an extension with uh, Claire to continue on for another month. Um, Faston just recently advertised for a zoning administrator as well. They had hired one, remember, two months ago. Mm -hmm. We were asking if maybe we could share her, and obviously that didn't work out so well. Um, but maybe we should get together with Faces. We talked about doing that. I know we talked about maybe working with Heinsberg as far as um, trying to hire someone together. So CBR CDRPC has um, uh, said she could put together some kind of an informational meeting. They've done some of that before, two towns working together and hiring someone. So Sasha, could you get a call between um, CDRPC, Bonnie, mm -hmm. Dave Stapleton, um, and myself um, sometime this week. Just find out from Bonnie when she's available and then go to Dave and then me as long as, and I'm pretty flexible. I mean, I mean, as long as it's try not to be a new time because those are my busiest usually um, when that those couple hours, but we'll try to discuss how we can possibly put something together between us and Faceton. Yeah. And, you know, maybe there's something there that we can work where it becomes a full-time job and there's benefits and that might attract someone. Um, yeah. You know, we need to figure something out. Um, it's, I don't know. Uh, website, Sasha, you're working on that. So we got a plan there. Yeah. Um, the police, we're gonna we're gonna reach back out to both Sam Hill and um, Lieutenant White to see if there's any movement there or any suggestions. Um, and so the other thing, or a couple more things, we had that request from Ethan Swain. He was the guy that had uh, was the tax um, homes, homestead de declaration. That was missed. Um, you had Cheryl Lynn went, she looked into that. That is, um, we waived them before. You know, we've done it a couple different times. Um, I think the question we had originally was this this guy's accountant or what was him? I guess, um, you know, there's no telling. Uh, but I would, because we have kind of set that precedent, uh, I would think that we would do that for this gentleman as well. Um, and it was a $548.30 late, late fee um, file for the home uh, homestead declaration. So did that $548, did, it, did that go to the delinquent tax collector? No, that, because it's a homestead declaration that came to the town. Okay, all right. Right, it's not a, something that Craig can that otherwise we would actually have the, um, the right to, to waive it. Okay. Um, so it's something that we received, so it's just returning it, it's not costing us anything. Um, so. If it's not costing us anything, I, I would, I'd make a motion to uh, return the money to Ethan. So. All right. Uh, second. I second. Cali seconds that. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Just aye. the three of us, yeah, aye. All right, last thing I have in old business, um, road crew stuff. It's the um, going to four days, 10 hours. Um, so I'm sure we want to start that as soon as possible. So do you want to start that next week or start it the first week in June? No, I don't see why we could start it next week. Uh, All right, so why don't we let them know and have it go through August. So they'll come back um, in September when the school's back in. Yeah. That's probably a good idea, right, to have? Mm, I'm just thinking in terms of <laughs> the amount of time that they have to do work on the road and what they can do for projects when they're working four tens instead of five eights. In terms of like setting up any right. traffic things yeah. they gotta right. set up, it takes them the time to do that the time to tear it down at no, the end that's of why the day. We, 
That's why we have gone to that is to allow right. them to do that. But in saying? September, they still have like there's still good working time to in essence. I'm just thinking about pushing some of the work on the roads. Like if they can have even into October to kind of do some more of that extra work, get some more work done on the roads. I don't know if there's any extra work getting done. My I the only thing I don't like about it is when the school's in session, I think we should have someone here uh, most of the, the five days a week. Why not? Uh, could we say that we'll go for four tens till Labor Day, and, and if Martin needs to go further, he come in and request that or you know, something like that. But I think we should yeah. try to stick with that Labor Day. All right. Weekend, if you know, that work, and you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it really matters with the buses, but. Well, it's really not, but just if there's just if there's a bad weather day. Weather day, you yeah. want to have guys there and, and be yeah. well. Yeah, well, they're going to come um, in anyway. Yeah, um, and they'll come in. They'll come in anyway. Because right. they're on call. And it's a good benefit to have. I mean, it's, but again, they're still working their 40 hours, so. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just the length and the amount of time that they, they have. I mean, right. by September, days are getting shorter anyways, you know, so. And most of those problems. It's getting harder and harder to work 10 hour days. And, September when there's no daylight, but you know I think that I'm, I'm in favor of going to Labor Day and, and reviewing it if necessary at that time. All right, so yes, yeah, sounds good. So if there's a need of after Labor Day and they're into a big project, they can, Martin can come in and request that. Out if there's any problems with that, do we think that's it? Aside from um, signing off on anything that we have to sign off on. Yeah, well, that's what um, we're going to walk up there and okay. so we look at a little bit back. Yeah. So this is like assigned the insurance. So on that road race, they're not on the dirt road at all, it just sounds like they're on 100 B. I think it's just 100 B. Yeah, so that's not the best. That's great about the Dr. Dicks and really cut on that corner. Class three part. Yeah, Jackie Nando. She's got another crop. It's on the lower part. 
What's the address? Okay, let me say um, 906. Yeah, it's way down. Just, um, this is trucking, the sander or there's gravel and there's trucking from Sean to Shane Ewell. Second minute. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.